Hello, let's welcome you to lesson six of Mastering Java. Here we're going to continue working with if statements, uh, continuing to introduce you to the richness of these statements. Here we're going to discuss the if else if ladder. So we've already discovered if statements and what they're useful for. We've already talked about the else uh, part of that, which can be executed as a kind of a, a last resort. If you fall through the if statement, the else statement will always um, trigger. But there's also kind of a, 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 a little more richness to the if that we can actually get into here. So let's get into that now. Let's declare a character variable called grade. And let's say that that's equal to A right now. All right, so we'll just go ahead and declare a variable. This is the grade that I received on my report card, let's say. So obviously I've done well, so I've got an A. And so let's put an if statement here. Let's, let's do if the grade is equal to A. And we can just put this right on the state on the line right here. But just to make it a little clear, let's go ahead and put the single uh, guy that we're going to do in this if right underneath it. We can say system.out.println. And we could say um, you earned an A fantastic job. Something like that. It's the best you can possibly do. Now again, it's only one statement that we're triggering whenever we when we earn an A. We could put braces around it. I could put a curly brace here and a curly brace here, of course, but that kind of clutters things up. I could also, if I wanted to, just to remind you, I could put it right here. That's perfectly fine too. But for this, we're just going to leave it down below. Now, since we actually earned an A, we run it. You earned an A. Fantastic job. Now, of course, if we didn't earn an A, what, what if we earn a B? Okay then do you think that's going to execute or not? Well, of course it's not because this only triggers if the grade is actually equal to A. And so if I run it in this case, nothing happens. The program's over. We jumped over the if and we're done. So let me reset this back to A. Now let's say, let's, let's say we wanted to have custom messages for the student based on whatever grade that they earned. So let's say, for instance, if, uh, if the grade was a B, we want to say something else. So we can create what we call an if-else-if ladder. So the way this works is, let me just show you, we can have an else if. Notice how when we put else and then if next to each other, it turns purple. That's a valid keyword. And then we're doing another comparison if grade is equal to B, like this. If grade is equal to B, and then we can go down below, we can say system.out.println. And then we can have another custom statement. We can say something like, you earned a B good job because that is still a very good job maybe not fantastic but it's a good job so what's going on here is when you create an else if then it's going to first evaluate this if if it's true then we will execute what's inside of the if and we'll bust out of the ladder we will not execute the statement here and we'll just fall out and we'll be done but if this is false then it goes and it tries to evaluate the next in the elf in the else if ladder and in that case it's a b so let's go ahead and um, let's go down here and create another else if. What if we actually got a C? So we can say else if grade equal to C. And we can have a custom message system dot out dot print ln. You earned a C. You are an average student, right? Not a typical glowing thing if you get a C on something. It's okay. It's not fantastic, but it's okay. So of course we've got A, B, and C taken care of. There's other possibilities that we could have here. So we could have another else if uh, grade equals D like this. Notice we have to enclose it in single character single quotes here because we have a character variable that we're dealing with. And then we can have system.out.println. And then we could say something like you earned a D, you did poorly. Okay, and then finally notice if they get an A, a B, a C, or a D, there's only one possibility remaining. So we could put else if down below, but we know that there's only one, th there, of all the grades you can have, either you can have an A, B, C, D, or an E, that's all you can possibly have. So we know that this last statement, if all the other ones were false, has to execute. So we can have an else, system.out.println, you earned an F you failed okay so we know that this is the form of the of the if else if ladder 
Um, basically, this all kind of forms a chain and they're all kind of working together. So when you see if and you see else if, else if, else if, and then finally an else at the very end, this is how you need to read it. Program execution will go in and try to check and see if the first if is true. If the first if is true, then it'll jump out and not execute and compare any of the other guys in the chain. But if the first guy uh, did not evaluate true, it'll bounce to the next guy in the chain and say else if it'll do the second comparison. If the second comparison is true, then we'll execute that and it'll bounce out of the chain. It won't do anything else. But if it's not true, then it'll go to the third and the fourth. So it'll basically continue going down the line until it hits a true statement. Whenever it finds one that's true, it'll execute the block of code that's there. And once it's executed, it'll blow out of there and it'll jump over all of the other else ifs, it'll also jump over this else because basically the way if else if is set up is only one of these guys should execute. Either the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one. If none of them are true, the last one will definitely execute. Um, and if any of the other ones execute prior to that, it'll jump over after the last else statement and, and basically continue on in your program. So let's see if this works. You earned an A, fantastic job. Let's see what happens if we earned a B. Run it again, you earned a B, good job. Notice we've executed this line here. Let's go and do part C, or grade C. You earned a C, you are an average student. That's this one right here. And then we'll go over here and do D. You earned a D, you did poorly. And of course, if all the other ones are true, if you didn't get an A, B, C, or a D, then the else statement is the catch-all that will always execute no matter what. So we put an F there. You earned an F. You failed. Because if you didn't get an A and you didn't get a B and you didn't get a C and you didn't get a D, then by definition you must have had an F. And that's why we set our final else statement up here. So the point of this lesson is to show you the full glory of the if statement series. In Java you can use single if statements to, to, to check for comparisons. You can use if statements coupled with single else statements as we've done in the last section. But if you're comparing again against lots of different things, only one of which is going to be true, then you can have the else if ladder come into play so that it will basically find the appropriate guy that's true, execute the block and bail out. The other thing I want to notice and point out to you before we quit here is that the that everything in this particular example was a single line if statement. So the only thing we had to do if this one was true was the single print statement. Here we had the single print statement if this was true. Here we had the single print statement if this is true. And because of that, I didn't really need to put any curly braces anywhere. But I can have much more complicated if, else, if uh, ladders. Like let's say I had to print two things out, then I would just need to put a, a curly brace around here and a curly brace around there, and then I could put another print statement in here. Everything's going to behave the same. The use of braces in Java just tells Java how you're grouping your code together. So don't feel like this is limited to one single line, I and mean, you can have anything you want execute under one of these else ifs. We're going to show you how later, but you can actually put for loops inside of if statements and else and else if statements. You can put other things inside. Um, so you're really not limited too much in what you can do with Java. It just depends on the logic that your particular program needs. And so what I want you to do now is get practice with that because that's 90% of learning how to program is getting practice with that logical flow. So go off to the example that we have, read it, and uh, try to do that one yourself because it'll force you to use the if else if ladder. It'll also force you to get some keyboard input input from the user. And so as you build your skills, a lot of these concepts will get more refined and easier for you to use and to have in your toolbox whenever a program that you're writing requires those skills.